When I got accepted to the Institute, at the end of the first year, I was on a very different path than where I thought I'd be. I had no idea that a lot of this was out here or that I could potentially be doing this. We're the largest and most frequently visited natural history museum in the world. We are constantly either developing or designing exhibits or upgrades to exhibits here in the museum. So my job largely is to oversee the design aspect of that process. So we can design exhibits in a whole range of subjects and media and so on up to maybe about a 5,000 square foot exhibit. When I left high school, I kind of wanted to try all different media, and coming to the Institute allowed you to do that. You know, you take ceramics with one group, and then you go take enameling, and then you do drawing and painting and that sort of thing. John Paul Miller then was designing the exhibits and the faculty shows and the student shows. I think looking back, I was always interested in exhibits and bringing the public in and sharing things with them. I had a great fortune to work at the museum. I had a great range of jobs. I was able to write and put together an exhibit there, and then I just really thought that that's more what I wanted to do. So came to Washington, then got a degree in architecture, which comes in enormously helpful. Had a good buddy who had an exhibit design firm, and he'd occasionally say, you know, I need an architect to help me figure something out. And then over time, I just became part of the staff. And then a couple years later, one day, phone call at the office, and it was, hi, I'm so-and-so from the Human Resources Office at the Smithsonian just wondering if you knew that there was a job posting for a chief of design. So it turned out to be this job. Over time, the building had gone through, as you can imagine, a number of changes. So the Dinosaur Hall was the biggest challenge because it had actually been called the Hall of Extinct Monsters <laughs> back in the 20s. And some of the dinosaurs that had been there had not moved in that time. We had to completely gut it and start over. Our scientists are really focusing more and more on the ecosystem, so it's kind of the whole story of the Cretaceous world or the whole story of the Jurassic world. And we'll open in summer of 2019. In a way, exhibit design is a little bit like urban planning in that you're guiding people through an experience. You're trying to give people a natural path to discover the story that you're telling or to have the experiences they want to have. And then the one thing that I take particular pride in is our elephant in the rotunda. I redesigned the setting for him about two years ago. We designed a much more compact setting for him and incorporated the information desk all as part of the setting. Every once in a while, like I'll stand up in the hall and I'll watch and you see somebody like really linger over something. There was a family here in a bird's hall with their son who was a special needs boy and they could not get him away. He wanted to look at every single bird. And I showed him that we had an app that you can actually bring up the bird calls. And I happened to have a spare copy of the book on the collection, you know, which I gave to him. You would have thought it was like the greatest thing. It's when those things click that, yeah, you realize it's really what it's all about.